So when it comes to unpopular opinions, I think that this is something that you expect to get some sort of reaction out of. And this channel has always been about discussion, reaction, things like that. Things that I want people to be able to feel like they can come here and talk about even when they disagree with me. I encourage that. I encourage discussion. But when I did the one for The Name of the Wind, it got such a nuclear reaction that, uh, that uh, I thought, okay, I'm going to kind of ease back on the unpopular opinion videos because I I'm not here for clicks or anything like that. I'm here to get discussion out of you guys. And uh, I, I got <laughs> basically the YouTube version of mean tweets with, with that book, and that's fine. I understand that. Even though at the end I did say, hey, guys, I want you to form your own opinion. You know, don't listen to me. Go out, read it, and form your own opinion. Uh, that didn't matter. I understand when it's something that's beloved to people. Uh, it might get a little bit of a visceral reaction. So uh, I retired the segment until now because I want to talk about some things this week, which is classic books. And uh, when you come to classic books, they just be a little something for everybody, and they've got different reasons for liking or disliking them. And I'm going to talk today about five of them uh, that I didn't really care for that may be considered an unpopular opinion because they are very much renowned and very much loved. So let's get into that now. Hey, what's up, bookworms and literary classic lovers? Mike back to talk about another unpopular opinion today, and this is going to be about five particular books that are considered classics that uh, I think are everything but. But uh, we'll get into that. I want to say up front that no, uh, these is not books that I dislike because I was forced to read them in high school. I know that is usually the big pushback that I get when I talk about classics that I didn't really care for. Uh, there are books I was forced to read in high school that are some of my favorite books of all time. And I'll get into that when I do my partner video for this, which is going to be uh, 14 classic books that I love. That's a list that I actually whittled down from about 30. So uh, you do know I do love quite a many classic books. But here's five that really just kind of stuck in my crawl, and I never understood why people just, they're just so beloved. I don't really understand. So uh, I, I know that I open myself up for a lot of, oh, you just didn't get it. Uh, these have allegory and commentary and symbolism and social things. I get that. I am fine with that. For me, I want to say that they're just because I didn't really care for the story or the characters. Also, I want to say I'm in no way criticizing the author's talents as a writer here. These are obviously very, very well-respected and loved writers for a reason. Again, this is just my opinion. And as, like I said with Name of the Wind, I want you guys to read these on your own and form your own opinion. Don't take my word as gospel. This is just my opinion. That said, these are in no particular order. Let's go. The first up is Moby Dick by Herman Melville. Uh, so, so many chapters about nothing in this book. Uh, I believe there's one channel that was all about the color white. And then you get to the end of it and it's like maybe it wasn't about that or the painting wasn't. <laughs> I'm not even really sure anymore. Uh, it was a while ago that I that I read it. Uh, to me, uh, I needed I needed more of this relationship that was going on between Ahab and, and, and Queequeg. Is that how you say it? Que Queequeg? 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 Is that what he says his name? Uh, it, it was hinted at like there was like maybe some kind of underlying you know romantic relationship there, and I felt like that should have been visited a little bit more than another chapter describing a harpoon. Okay, so uh, I felt like the book was very much uh, just commentary on the whaling industry, and, and I get that. But uh, to me, that's not how the book was sold. It was sold to me as like, hey, it's like Jaws. You're hunting this whale. You know, it's, it was like a classic Jaws. That's, that's kind of what I went into it. So I want to say I had expectations for it. I just, I just never really got as much out of it as this Ahab's revenge tale, like it's, it's obviously been just, just marketed as for, for decades now, and it just, it just didn't click with me. Uh, again, nothing wrong with the writing style or anything like that. It just wasn't my cup of tea. Let's move along. This one is going to be kind of not really controversial because I put it in the thumbnail because it's the only one that I own, and that is Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger. And here's the thing is. I think that uh, from the feedback that I've received is that it, it might not be an unpopular opinion. It might be quite popular now to dislike this book. Uh, for so many years, people told me about how I had to read this book because, uh, full disclosure, uh, I suffered from depression for a long, long time until I changed my eating habits. 
And everybody's like, yo, hey, I was in a depression and I read that book and what Holden went through and it just completely changed my life and stuff. So I had these high expectations. Again, expectations, they matter, but to me, that isn't the final way that I judge a book if I had, if it met my expectations or not. Uh, for this, I, I, I don't know. I, I didn't really think he's much as depressed as maybe he was manic and somewhat psychotic. That's kind of how I got out of it. Like, like maybe he was in a mental institution at the end. <laughs> Uh, but I, I think that Salinger just wants us to believe that Holden is like this crazy, smart intellectual, and I just never really got that. It seemed to be that like he wanted people to love him, but he didn't want to actually interact with people, which I can actually relate with. I, I know what that feels like. Like I, sure, everyone likes you know to get positive feedback, but you know when you have to actually put in the work of like maintaining friendships and stuff like that, sometimes it can be hard work. I know that's things that are tough to deal with in, in establishing relationships with people. But this, it just never really quite got away, got got around with. To me, it just felt like he was just kind of being whiny. And, and I don't want to say whiny about someone who is very clearly suffering from some kind of condition. Like I said, been there. I, I understand. It just, it never really hit me that way. And for me, a book is about characters. And I don't have to love the protagonist. Uh, I need to at least care what's going to happen. And I just didn't care by the end. I thought he was so unlikable that I just didn't care. And that to me, that's just it's just never going to work for me because I'm character driven. I, I think it's always got to have something to do, some kind of connection that you form with that character. And I never could get it there. And I feel like the reputation this book has is the question I presented is if Mark David Chapman, the guy that killed John Lennon, didn't reference this book, would it be as popular as it is now? I, I, I always I always wonder that. But again, apparently this is not an unpopular opinion anymore. Apparently many people uh, do not like this book now. At least that's what I that's, that's that's what the feedback I got just based off that thumbnail. Uh, but uh, there we are. Let's move along. Another one here is The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. This is a book that constantly gets called the Great American Novel. And it really blew me away when I learned that this book was pretty much fading into obscurity and thought no one thought it was anything special until he passed away. And then it was reevaluated and all of a sudden, it's genius. I, I, I don't know exactly what happened there. Uh, I don't know what happened to society as a whole after he died, maybe. Why it became all of a sudden more relatable. This is that question where I get like, why is it a classic? Just because people said so? I mean, what are really the standards here for it to be a classic? Does it just have to be 50 years old and then it's considered a classic? I, I don't really understand the thing. But for me, Gatsby, he, he, he he's just glorified as a romantic, rich, extravagant man, but he's just, he's toxic as hell. I mean, he's got a very clearly, just a very unhealthy obsession with Daisy, this whole book to the point where it's like, D you are a borderline stalker and it's creepy. I don't really understand. But I mean, the whole book seems to be speaking from this moral high ground about lessons that we should already know. And that is that money can't buy you everything. Money can't buy you love, right? Uh, I feel like the Beatles told me in two minutes and 11 seconds what what it took uh, 47,000 words for F. Scott Fitzgerald to tell me. So uh, I, I didn't get the, the moral grandstanding out of it. I never thought that Gatsby was likable at all. I thought he was very clearly sick in the head. And uh, let's just say uh, his fate in the book didn't bother me that much. And when that's what happens to your 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 main character in your story, and you kind of like ha ha ha, I don't think that it really went over the way that it that it really intended to. So that's why that was on here. Uh, next up, this one I, I don't know really very many would expect this. This is just kind of one that always stuck with me because. Uh, in high school, I took uh, advanced placement literature, and while everybody else got to watch the movies, we got to read the books, right? And everyone was basically watching All Quiet on the Western Front, the movie, which is based off the novel by, um, is it Eric Remarque? I I'm not sure. I'm probably saying that wrong. I, I apologize if I am. But uh, everyone was talking about this movie, and we didn't actually have to read it. It was one of the times where we got the list, so we had to fought, choose five books to read. And I, I chose something else. But based off the feedback I heard, I said, well, that actually sounds quite of interesting. I think I'll pick up the book before, because I like to read the book before I watch the movie. And I read that book and look, it's gritty. It pulls no punches. It looks at the horrors of war and it does that well. We're talking about limbs missing, disease rot, what it's like being in these foxholes. You would think, okay, that sounds brilliant, right? If you're really into that thing to really know about warfare and stuff. But it also shows the boredom of life sitting in a foxhole during World War One, And here's the whole thing. That stuff needs to be there, but it is a drag to read. This was my problem when I talked about The Heroes by Joe Abercrombie. I understand that a lot of war is sitting around and waiting. 
waiting for the next battle, you know, that the, the sense of dread and things like that. That stuff matters. It's just boring to read sometimes. Um, I mean, we're dealing with like this guy trying to keep his sanity and stuff in this foxhole. So I, I get it. But here's the thing. I don't want to read about the waiting. Okay. It's not intriguing stuff here. So of all on the list, I feel like this story, I, I don't really think that I, I hated it by Andy Bennett or that it's actually a really beloved. It's just one that kind of stuck with me when I talk about classics. Uh, but I just, it was just, I was just bored. I was just bored for most of it. And the ending was like the most unsatisfying thing I think I've read in a classic novel. So uh, check that one out uh, at your own risk. I, I think you'll probably find more to like, of the ones on this list, it's probably the one that I like the most. Ah, uh, just, man, just sometimes it's like, yeah, I, I, I get how dirty this foxhole is. I get it. Uh, let's move on to the last one here, and this is going to really maybe ruffle some feathers. I don't know. I don't really know. Uh, I don't feel like classic novel fans go as crazy as fantasy fans do when you say you don't like something. But The Old Man in the Sea by Ernest Hemingway. And I know not hailing Hemingway as God's gift to literature is considered blasphemy by some people. And look, it isn't anything against Hemingway. I love A Farewell to Arms. I love The Sun Also Rises. Those are two brilliant, brilliant books. And I read them before this one. And that might have actually been the reason why I think this one kind of missed the mark. Uh, the best thing going for this book, it's about 100 pages long. Okay, It is not... I mean, at one point, I feel like this has been like a 75-page paragraph here. <laughs> uh, like a run on citizens, census. But I, I think the, another instance of of life lessons that we should already know. You know, we try sometimes and we fail. The important part is that you accept it and you learn from it. Uh, it also felt me felt like he was trying to tell me to uh, understand and appreciate simplicity. Again, these are great, great lessons. I just don't feel like, even if you didn't know them, that they're anything that is exciting to read about. Very, very dull. And it did, did all the book maybe wanted to do was learn how to fish, I guess. I, I don't... I, I feel like this one really kind of missed the mark. I don't have really a lot to add. I mean, the book's about, a, like I said, 100 pages long. so not really much to add. Uh, it, again, it isn't anything wrong with the writing style in the book. Uh, and, and this is one of the ones that was forced on me in high school. And I think it was forced on just about everyone. But again, uh, when I get into that, that list of classics I love, uh, I'll tell you right now, seven of them were on high school reading lists. So... Um, I, I love, I, it's not anything like that. It is not a thing, but here's the thing. I don't want to say I judge any of these books just based off of how it was in high school because the way I think now and the way I think in high school, it's like basically dealing with a seven-year-old. You know, you weren't really intellectually open to anything like this then, especially when you were considering it work. So I know some of these might feel a little differently upon revisiting. Uh, I, I try to be as objective about these as possible, but that's the five that I really thought about that I just could not understand why people love them so much. So what are you guys' thoughts? What books, classic books have you read and everyone just thinks that they are just amazing books that everyone needs to read before they die and you get to it and you're like, did I read the same thing as everyone else? I'm sure we all have a few. Drop in the comments and let me know what they are. And guys, no wrong answers. This is all opinion. If you love these books, that's great. That's wonderful. This is just my opinion. I want to hear about yours. What are some unpopular opinions you have on some classic books? Drop in the comments and I will talk to you guys there.